Aleph. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into all your commandments, I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we turn to Psalm 119. We've read the first stanza of this longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. There is a stanza for every letter, in order. Each stanza has eight verses. The first letter in each verse is the letter for that stanza. And so the first stanza, every one of the eight verses, begins with Aleph in Hebrew. The grand theme of this psalm is the Word of God. And as we read through it, we will see that indeed it speaks of Jesus, who is the Word of God, according to John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, this speaks of Jesus when he was the eternal Son. Before he took on human form, he was with the Father in glory. But this psalm also records that thy word is forever settled in heaven. That is, that that the words of Scripture were part of the blueprint of this world, in that they define the spiritual basis on which God would deal with men. And this was written down from the beginning, because God can see into the future. And so, in Scripture, God could write the lives of the godly men and the evil men, knowing the choices that they would make. Just as if you're in a helicopter, you can see what's happening on the ground and anticipate things that will happen as you see things unfold. Well, this is what God does at a much higher level. This psalm highlights the Word of God, and Jesus is the Word of God. And as we go through this psalm, we will actually see that It really is talking about Jesus. Jesus taught us always to live according to the word of God. And this is the way of the blessed. And this was the way that Jesus lived. And so, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Well, of course, there is no undefiled in an absolute sense except the Lord Jesus himself. But, God's blessing flows to those who do walk in holiness and in truth because he has dealt with their sin. That's the second grand theme of scripture. The first being he has created all these things and second that he has redeemed them by the blood of the Lamb. So God's blessing comes to those who are undefiled, who are justified. Jesus was undefiled because he committed no sin we become undefiled because we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. But when Jesus met those who believed in him, he said, you believe in me truly if you keep my word, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So the blessing comes from keeping the word of God. And that's what happens here. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in in the law of the Lord. The word law is not just a set of regulations, but it is the Torah, the teaching, the whole body, in the first instance of the books of Moses, which is the foundation of scripture, and this psalm presumably dates from the time of David, when, which is before much of the prophetic scriptures were written. So it's focusing on what the Lord has revealed through Moses. 
Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. Wholeness of heart is a foundation for our relationship with God. He is true and faithful, and we must be sincere in our relationship with him, wholehearted. They also do no iniquity. If we choose to walk in God's way, it is a choice that we can make and we must make, then we do that by turning aside from iniquity. So those who walk in the law of the Lord with a whole heart do not commit iniquity. They do not turn aside to go their own way. They walk in his ways, in the ways that he has commanded, he has laid out. And how do we know his way? Well, we discern his way by meditating in the scriptures. It's not a simple recipe. Every person's life is different. Circumstances are different, relationships are different, times are different. But the principles by which we are to live are all enshrined in the scripture. And so he commands us to walk in his ways, which are revealed to us in these scriptures. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. So in this second half of this first stanza, the focus changes from a general blessing on those who keep his testimonies, to what am I doing about it? Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes, that I would walk in your way. This was the grand desire of the Lord Jesus. He always did those things that pleased the Father. He kept his word. He fulfilled his word. That's the marvellous declaration he made in the Sermon on the Mount, that he didn't come to destroy the word of God, but to fulfil it in every detail, to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. There was no point at which Jesus could be condemned on the basis of his life. On many occasions, people came to him to try and trip him up, to find fault with him, but they could not. He was not ashamed. And we will not be ashamed to the extent that we also walk in his ways. Take heed to his commandments. Taking note of the fact that our circumstances are different and so the way that we fulfil the commandments will be different to those who had a literal temple or a literal tabernacle who lived in the land of Israel. But when we walk in his ways, we will not be ashamed. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. How many people come before God but they are not upright in heart. They're not pure in heart. The pure in heart shall see God, Jesus taught us. But if we are not upright in heart, we are pretenders. We wonder how many of those who profess God are actually pretending, or are they genuinely, wholeheartedly, purely seeking God. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. We don't begin our life knowing all these things. We must learn them. And it takes a lifetime to learn them. We can learn a few Bible stories when we are young. But to grasp the full depth of God's way takes a lifetime. Moses learned of his God as a very young child with his mother. But when he was still quite young, He was taken to the court and he learned the ways of Egypt. The Lord had to take him into the wilderness for 40 years as a shepherd for him to round out his knowledge and understanding. And then he was ready, after 80 years of preparation, to take on the children of Israel. So I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not forsake me. Utterly. Because Jesus walked in the way of the Lord, he kept the statutes, the judgments, the testimonies, the ordinances, the precepts. He could go forward confident in life, that he could lay down his life and take it again. So our stanza ends, O do not forsake me utterly. Don't abandon me. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart.